Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing two-factor authentication and show you how we implemented 2FA in Clipper with the Adonis.js web framework. Adonis.js is one of the primary technologies used in Clipper and we have been a proud supporter and sponsor. Two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security to your online accounts by requiring an additional login credential in addition to a username and password. Instead of immediately gaining access after entering a username and password, users will be required to provide another piece of information such as a pin number that's sent through sms or by using tokens retrieved from 2fa application such as google authenticator we will be performing the following list of activities in this video migrate the database update model create a user controller create an auth provider class generate the qr code set up an account on 2fa applications and finally to factor challenge you can get the source code from my github account you can clone the repo and follow along with me in this video i have put the link to the repo in the description of this video. Let's get started by migrating the database. We first need to store the secret and recovery codes of a user enabling 2FA. We will create a database migration to add two new properties to our users table. The two properties are two-factor secret and two-factor recovery codes. Two-factor secret is a user-specific secret that is used to verify whether the token provided is valid or not. And two-factor recovery codes is used when a user is unable to retrieve tokens from 2FA applications. Once you have created the migration files you need, you can run the migration with the node ace migration colon run command. Now let's get back to our user model and make the related changes there. We don't want to store these credentials in plain text on our database and we don't want to serialize the model properties. So we have used serialize as null so that it removes model properties from the serialized output. And we have used encryption, which is a module provided by Aronis.js, which helps with encryption and decryption of previously encrypted values. Let's create a user controller that handles enabling two-factor authentication. We are generating secret and recovery codes for the user that's enabling 2FA and storing them to our database. I have created a class two-factor auth provider where the logic related to 2FA is located. Let's see how we are going to generate a user-specific secret and recovery codes. To create the secret, we are using the generate secret method provided by Node2FA package. You can install the package for your project by running the npm command. You can run npm install node-2FA to install the package. Once the installation completes, you can import the package and proceed to generate the secret. To generate the secret, we will be using generate secret method provided by Node2FA. We are providing the name of the app and user's email as parameter for the function. Once we have generated the secret, let's go ahead and generate some recovery codes which can be used in case we are unable to retrieve tokens from 2FA applications. We will be generating a few recovery codes and assign them to a user. Each recovery code can be used only once during the authentication process. The recovery codes are random strings generated using the crypto random string npm library. The library can be installed using npm install command. Up to now, we have generated the secret and recovery codes. We should provide users with a way to add the account to an authenticator application. To set up an account with such authenticator application, we will be providing users with a QR code. We will be using QR code npm package for generating a QR code. It can be installed using npm install command. Let's see how our implementation to generate QR code looks like. We are providing the name of the issuer, user email, user's two-factor secret to generate a QR code. Two data URL returns a URL containing a representation of the QR code image, which will be showing to the user. Make sure that the issuer, email, and secret are valid and match the values you have used while generating the secret. If they don't match, you may see a key not recognized while scanning the QR code. Once we have created the QR code, we should now get back to user controller and send the response along with QR code. In the UI, once the response is received, you can show the QR code using the HTML image tag.
This is how our setting space looks like as soon as you have enabled the two-factor authentication. This is the QR code that you need to scan in your authenticator application so that it provides you with a time-based token and you can use that token to log in into the system where you have enabled two-factor authentication. Now, the last and the most important part of 2FA begins. We need to ask for a one-time token with the users that have 2FA enabled when they log in. Once the user provides their login credentials, we check whether two-factor authentication is enabled for the user or not. If the two-factor authentication is enabled for the user, we store the login ID in session and redirect the user to the two-factor challenge page. In other case, we log in the user and redirect the user to the home page. Once the user is on the two-factor challenge page, the user will be asked to enter either a token or a recovery code. Then, once the submit button is clicked, we need to verify that either the token or the recovery code is valid for the user or not. So what goes here is once we receive the 2FA code provided by the user, we find the user using the user ID stored in session. We will be using the verified token method provided by node 2FA to check if a time-based token matches a token from the secret key or not. In case of recovery code, we check whether the recovery code provided by the user exists in our system for the user or not. Once the recovery code has been used, we remove the recovery code from our system. That's it. We have come to an end of this video. Your users can now enable 2FA for their accounts and enjoy the additional security it provides. The code used in this blog is available over on GitHub. I'll put a link to it on the description of this video. I hope you found this video useful. Let us know if you want us to cover some topic or if you are running into an issue. See you in the next video.